Almost ready to go. Hey everybody, this is Mark Fraunfelder, editor of Cool Tools, and it's time for another episode of the Cool Tools Show and Tell video podcast. I've got two guests with me this time, and uh, they have told me about their tools. There's some really cool stuff coming up. The first guest I'd like to introduce is Victor Urbach. Victor is has a mechanical engineering background and, and he's a management consultant with expertise in financial modeling. He's an avid photographer and bicyclist and the publisher of the Urbach Letter with over 2,500 readers. He lives on Long Island, New York. Hey, Victor, how's it going? Uh, hi, Mark. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, Victor, did I pronounce your last name correctly? Urbach. Urbach, okay. Yes. Sounds good. Uh, uh, all right. And then our other guest is Clark Green. Clark has served as a scoutmaster for the past 30 years. He maintains a blog and podcast for volunteer scouters at scoutmastercg.com. He's also the author of Thoughts on Scouting, a collection of 150 sayings, maxims, adages, mottos, epigrams, proverbs, and <laughs> aphorisms drawn from his scouting experience. Hey, Clark, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for uh, making this happen, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. So the fun thing about the, this uh, Cool Tools Show and Tell podcast is that what we want to do is have the the readers of Cool Tools participate in it because it's the readers who provide all of the content anyway. So um, what better way to like showcase some of our, our contributors and readers than by having this podcast and, and having other people get to, get to meet who you guys are, find out a little bit about you and stuff like that. So um, why don't we, uh, first of all, uh, Victor, tell me a little bit about the Urbach letter and, and what it is. It's a newsletter that I've been publishing for about 11 years that uh, is basically in my travels, things that I find that are of interest to me. I, uh, I publish them for a nice group of folks who are my friends and business associates and other folks that have found me along the way. And every month is different. It's at urbachletter.com. Mm -hmm. And I invite you to subscribe if you like it. Oh, good. So anyone, anyone who wants to can, can sign up for it. Is, is that correct? That it's, yes. It's... Yeah, happy to have you. Okay, that sounds great. And, and Clark, um, uh, that's really amazing that you've been doing scouting for, th for 30 years. Uh, what, uh, what's the appeal of it for, for you? Well, I love to be in the outdoors, love to go camping. Working with youth is uh, continually reinvigorating. It keeps you young, and uh, it's just been a blast. It's been a blast to do. Did My own son went through and became an Eagle Scout, and uh, I've just hung in there with, with the program for this long and occupied all kinds of different uh, 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 leadership roles in it, but the scoutmaster thing has been the one that really keeps me going. It's a blast. We we have a we have a lot of fun. That's great. Yeah, I have excellent scouting experiences as a, as a kid growing up in Colorado. Oh yeah. Our uh, our our troop was really into backpacking, and we went every we went twice a month. Wow. Without fail, and it was great. We when it snowed, we did snowshoe and cross country skiing, and I just had great memories of doing it so so that's great that you're still involved in, in doing that I've got a couple of daughters and one of them is a Girl Scout and so nice. th that's kind of how I connect with that but uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started with with all the tools that we have to talk about Victor you wanted to talk about the Joby grip tight smartphone mount I do uh, it's, you wrote in my bio uh, I an avid photographer mm -hmm. and for, for many years I travel with a very heavy bag of SLRs and lenses and all kinds of gadgets and doodads and um, recently though I've just been going with my smartphone and using that for photography and videography and I've been really happy with the results one of the issues though is um, you know how do you stabilize your shots. Um, it's, it's important when you're in low light situations or when you're shooting video or even when you want to be in the picture yourself. I just got back from vacation uh, to Nantucket Island with my wife and two boys and uh, so I, I saw that the value of not having just three people in the picture. I want to be in there too. So you know, how, how do you do that with a smartphone? Well, that's where this 
Joby Griptite comes in. And you can see the size of this. It could really serve as a key ring type of thing. But what happens is it folds out like this, and then the legs spread into a little mini tripod. The sides flip up, and then it's spring-loaded. So it's a universal um, mount for your smartphone. And even if you have a large phone like this Galaxy S3 in a case, the, the jaws will accommodate it, and um, then it has a little ball head, and you can position it exactly. You can sit on a table like this. It's also great when you're on an airplane and you want to watch a, a movie, you mm -hmm. can just have it on the tray in front of you. So it, it's a really neat little gadget. And uh, a follow-on to this is that the little tripod part spins off, and it, it's a standard quarter-20 thread on it. All cameras have this. You could actually screw this into a regular camera if you wanted to have a real low pod. Mm -hmm. Or what you can do is you can get one of these little gadgets. It's called a clampette. And what it is, it's a C-clamp that has the quarter-20 thread on it and a knob so that you can clamp it to all different types of things, a, a table edge, a ladder, a tree limb, or whatever, and get the angle you want, and then screw the grip tight onto it. That's, That's great. So, so what I like about these is how compact they are. They're, they look great for travel. Absolutely. And you just you know slip it into your pocket, and uh, I've gotten away from carrying the 25-pound bag of cameras, and uh, <laughs> the, the results are pretty good. That's great. Like, really, really good. What, um, what about the, what's the price on these? Um, this is about $29 or so, mm -hmm. and uh, this is about $12. That's great. What a what a find. And Thank it, you. it makes you know, I, I've given these as gifts, people love them. And it's, oh, yeah. it, since it's fairly universal, you don't have to worry what kind of phone they have. Or mm -hmm. if they have a case or whatever. It looks like a terrific tool. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So um so Clark, you wanted to talk about the Hennessy hammock, and I think you've done a little bit of customization on it as well. Yeah, I have. And um the this whole hammock camping thing is is really kind of unbelievable. You can get a hammock and it's almost like having a hot rod. You can customize it, you can do all kinds of things with it. I got mine, let me grab it for you. I don't have it set up, but here's the bag, okay? okay. Uh, I got it, it, it would be kind of difficult to show you in, in uh, the office. Uh, I do have a picture of it that if I'm really, really slick and I use screen share, there we go. I should be able to show you. And, you know, basically it's it's something that's um, got a, a hammock and a rain fly on it. And um, I have to see if I can figure out how to get back from screen share now. Um, there we go. And um, you would think, like, it... it the first thing you think, am, am I going to actually sleep in a hammock? Is it going to be comfortable? But the way that the Hennessy hammock is, is cut, there's an asymmetric cut to it. So you kind of sleep crossways uh, to the hammock, and you sleep really flat. Um, the original Hennessy's, what's, what's interesting about the whole hammock phenomenon in camping is it's, it's kind of like this deal that happened online. Uh, the hammock started showing up maybe five to ten years ago, and then all of these different ways of modifying them and things. There's a hammock forum out there that is just immense, and if you go and you look on it, you'll find uh, real hammock uh, aficionados who will teach you all about how to use it, how to set it up. There is a bit of a learning curve with it, but when the Hennessy hammocks originally came out, the way that you got into them was through this Velcroed slit in the bottom. And you you know just imagining that it was it was really kind of awkward. So I used mine for a while and then I kind of put it away. I slept really well in it, but then I found all of these little cottage industries out there. One of which includes uh, uh, some folks who will modify your old Hennessy hammock 
they'll put a zipper in it so that you don't have to go up through the bottom and they'll close that slit up and then they they'll do all uh, kinds of other interesting modifications and they offer little doodads that you can use to put gear in it and things like that then I started reading about let me show you this whoopee slings whoopee slings and I had no idea what that was this is amp steel and I don't know if anybody out there knows what am steel is but it's a braided uh, line made of a, a, a dyneema and this line here this little tiny thing I'm holding here is rated to hold a, a braking strength of 1200 pounds and people actually use it on winches and stuff like on vehicle winches and things and um, you make up a whoopee sling which is this and I won't try to explain all the uh, things that you have to do to do that but it just makes the hammock a little bit easier to rig so the way that hammocks have developed is kind of the way a lot of stuff has developed online uh, and, it, and the way that it wouldn't have developed until we had the internet to do it um, and now you know there's this entire uh, camping hammock subculture out there that I uh, am proud to say I am now a, a you know a dues paying member um, <laughs> but uh, they are really amazing. There's lots of different makers. Hennessy is just the one that I happen to buy. Uh, but it is something, if you're a camper and you go out, uh, you should really check into it. Um, the cost of the one that I have now, it's right around about $150, $200, depending on the different options that you choose with it. But, it, but I just used it uh, about a week ago for a week of canoeing up in Canada, and it was wonderful. So could you just give me the reason why you prefer a hammock to an air mattress? There's probably a few different advantages. Well, when you, after you've reached a certain age, and I think, gentlemen, we've all reached a certain age, <laughs> right? Sleeping on the ground means having to get down on the ground and then getting up off the ground, right? Mm -hmm. It's really nice not to have to do that, just to sit into a hammock and then lay down and do that. So that's real nice. The other thing is, is that no matter how cushy the sleeping pad, and I've got some pretty good ones. Um, I've got a big Agnes inflatable sleeping pad that's about two and a half inches thick, and I usually am very comfortable in it. But usually, no matter how cushy that is, I'm rolling around and waking up. Um, during the night uh, when I'm camping. In the hammock, literally lay down, go to sleep, and wake up in exactly the same position. It's pretty amazing. That's great. Th that's actually one of the things that reasons I don't like camping that much anymore is because, like you said, getting on the ground and it's n and rolling around and waking up like six or seven times a night yeah. to the parts of your body that fall asleep need to... <laughs> <laughs> take a break and the cold spots and the whatever but yeah uh, yeah no if it, it, you the entry into them is like I say the best place to go is start out with the hammock forum and you can google that you'll find it instantly and you'll be amazed I mean it's like I said it's a whole other country out there <laughs> great pick thanks a lot Clark mm -hmm. so Victor back to you with the sure. crocodile ear polypus that's this tool, and what this is, it looks like uh, a hemostat with offset finger holes, but the really special thing about this, let me turn it this way and get it right in the frame, is what happens at the tip when you move the finger grips. And I'm going to bring this in close. I don't know if it'll focus mm -hmm. on it, but can you see? It looks like a little crocodile mouth. I'll move out of the way. <laughs> and it opens and closes. And... Obviously, this is a, a specialized tool that you know you won't use very often, but when you need it, nothing else <laughs> will do. Um, because what you can do is actually pass this through a quarter-inch hole to get inside some place that's inaccessible to grab something, to grab a piece of string or thread or something to pull it through, and it'll operate. And nothing else moves except what's going on at the tip. And this is a surgical instrument, but it's sold by specialty tool shops. Uh, it comes in various lengths. This is a five and a half inch. There's a shorter one, and then there's a 12 inch one. Uh, and the price range is between 18 and $30 for this. Uh, it, it's incredible. a very clever little tool. It was developed for doing ear surgery. Mm -hmm. And actually <laughs> goes right in there and does whatever they need to do in your ear. So it actually um, is not 
made by the same manufacturer, of course, but it has a big brother. And the, the, the crocodile ear polypus, the name of that tool, has a big brother called the alligator. Okay? <laughs> and again, same concept. It's got a, tr a, you know, a grip, uh, like a pistol grip, that makes the jaws go. Um, this is really more used for when you need to grab something uh, like big and, and possibly gross. It was actually developed for unclogging uh, dish, you know, disposals in the sink. So you oh, can yeah. go in there and grab stuff out. Uh, what's also neat about it is it has a light in the tip and it's a little battery compartment and you can illuminate what's going on at the tip. So even when you're down in there trying to get something out, um, it'll work for that. Uh, this yeah. is about $10. Those are so cool. What I mean... You, th they look like things you don't need to have a lot, but when you do need them, boy, you'll be happy that you'll you have exactly them. Exactly right. <laughs> you just would feel like a better person if you own them. You, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, it's something to add to your tool arsenal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A great conversation piece, too. <laughs> <laughs> Chase your cat around with it. It's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, my kids would love to play with those. So, uh, Clark, in, in keeping with your camping uh, theme, you wanted to talk about a couple of camping wood stoves. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. Almost two-thirds of the world still cooks three meals a day, 365 days a year, on wood. So people have made it their business to try and find the most effective and efficient way to use wood as a fuel. Something like two-thirds of the wood that's harvested in the world is used to burn. And we all know that that causes problems and things. And there's a fellow named uh, Larry Winiarski, he's a, a professor. And there's the Avrapreco Institute in uh, Arizona that has worked really hard at developing these technologies. And I am going to use the magic of screen share again um, because... I don't have this stove inside because I think I would be murdered if I brought it into my house. But give me a second here, and I'll just narrate this very short video about it. The whole thing fits in a five-gallon bucket. There's a little stick stand that you use with it. And this is a pretty substantial uh, stove. This is not a backpacking stove. This is something we use when we're car camping. Mm -hmm. um, but it's heavily insulated. This gives you an idea of the size of the fuel that we use for it. It's heavily insulated. Put the fuel in through this door, and the geometry of the stove creates a gasification area at the top where you see this burning. You see very little smoke coming out of that. And then the sticks that we use to feed it are really about as big around as your thumb. And you need a very little bit of fuel to produce a hot flame. This is a heat exchanger that goes around the pot. You can see that cooking away right there. Very little bit of wood, and from the time we took it out of the bucket till the time we boiled a small amount of water in this pot was maybe five, ten minutes. So um, they're really they're really something else. Uh, and that one, that particular one, is made by um, Echo Zoom, and uh, they offer two or three different permutations of that. But uh, they're an interesting company in that uh, they take a certain amount of the profits they make on selling stoves, and they've sold them more to people who are interested in uh, survival and emergency preparation than they have to campers in the United States. But whatever sales they make retail in the United States, they put into distributing the stoves into developing countries, and they have a very ambitious program by which they do that. They send a team of volunteers, and they teach people how to use the stoves and things. But uh, it's a fascinating subject. I, I have another one that actually is a backpacking stove that works a lot on the same principles. And it's called the Solo Stove. And the Solo Stove is also a wood gasification stove. You see it has a grate in the bottom here. And these holes on the outside go through a double-walled structure here so that superheated air enters at the holes. I don't know if you can see that or not. Mm -hmm. At the holes at the top here. And um, what that does is it creates a gasification area in the top of the stove 
so that all the smoke with all the volatile gases in that, in that smoke actually burn before they leave the stove. And this one is set up, like I said, for backpacking. It's quite light, especially when you consider that this is all you need. You don't need to have uh, any kind of a fuel bottle. You don't need to have disposable uh, gas cylinders or anything like that. And uh, it packs down nice. And Solo Stove also offers this uh, pot. And the whole thing nests together. Now, they also provide storage bags for it so that you don't get soot all over everything. But mm -hmm. uh, I just thought... This this is just an easier way to show it. So the solo stove and the one from Echo Zoom, the Echo Zoom stove, both things that we started using with our troop over the past several years. Don't use any more bottled propane. Don't use any disposable fuel cylinders or anything like that. I think that's a good thing for scouts to do, and I think it's a good thing for anybody to do. But they work amazingly well, and I don't really end up seeing a whole lot of difference over the time we spend cooking with these stoves than I have when we're using uh, the other alternatives, either a fuel gas stove or a bottled gas stove. So um, they're really something that's changed the face of the way that we do our camping, and, and I really highly recommend them for folks. They look great. And what, what are the prices on those two stoves? Um, the Echo Zoom is right around $85 or $90 by the time you get it shipped to you because it uses a ceramic insulation, and it's going to be right around 100 bucks. Um, this uh, setup for the solo stove, I think the stove itself is around sixty dollars, and the pot it's, the pot is around thirty. Um, comparable to any one of the better uh, bottle gas or liquid fuel stoves that you would buy for backpacking. Looks great. Thanks a lot, Clark. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Victor, back to you with 3M VHP heavy duty mounting tape. Now, you probably have um, seen this white foam tape that they sell in, uh, like, office supply stores. 3M makes that. It's, it's a light-duty, double-sided foam tape. It's okay for sticking light things onto um, non-porous surfaces. But when, when there's a lot of reasons why I hate that white foam tape. It doesn't hold very well, and it you know it, it comes apart and it doesn't really come off totally. You have to keep rubbing it off with your thumb, and um, so I, I searched around for something better because you know using that kind of um, double-sided foam adhesive is very handy. So I, I came across what is used in industrial um, applications, and it's this 3M VHB heavy-duty mounting tape. It's not cheap. Uh, a spool like this, uh, which is probably several years worth, uh, is like 30 bucks. But um, it can literally replace mechanical fasteners in a lot of applications. Uh, on my way to finding this, I started using uh, auto body tape, which is used for applying trim and rub strips and things to cars. This is far stronger than even that uh, thin black tape. Uh, it comes in a lot of different configurations, um, different sizes, widths, and so forth. Um, and there's, it's in varied prices. Like I said, this roll is about 30 bucks. You can get it on Amazon and, and other uh, online sources. But I found it extremely handy, very useful. And this is the type of thing, when you have this around, you'll find more and more uses for it. I mean, mm -hmm. nothing beats you know, a solid mechanical fastener, a screw, whatever, but when you can't use that or don't want to, this is a, a great thing to use. Looks great. Very yeah. good. So, um, uh, Clark, tell me about the Black Diamond Storm headlamp. Okay. So, uh, everybody who camps now uses a headlamp, usually an LED headlamp. And uh, they're great to have for you know, I actually, this stays in my bag and I carry it with me everywhere because they're handy to have. Uh, I don't really know of a bad LED headlamp. Um, you, you know, starting at eight bucks, you can grab a, one that works perfectly well. This one, I kind of geeked out on this one because it's the headlamp of all headlamps. Um, it is a, uh, it has a good area light to it with uh, the outer LEDs and then it has a spotlight that is 100 lumens, which is pretty impressive for LEDs and for a headlamp. And this really lights up the dark 
uh, when we're outside. It also has the uh, red LEDs. Um, the thing about the spotlight is, is that, I'll see if you can see it. Oops. Uh, I'm still, there we go. It has a dimmer. So you hold down and it actually dims. And it goes through a couple of dimming cycles. So you can save batteries and, uh, and also um, have light that's appropriate for what you're doing. Uh, another nice thing about it is it has a lockout feature. Um, you'll see here on the side, you'll see a little light blink. And now that's locked. Uh, you have to hold the button down for uh, six seconds to unlock it. Uh, but that way, if it's in your backpack or in your bag or something like that, it can't accidentally turn on and run its batteries out. Um, and this little lock feature also uh, doubles as a battery uh, indicator. So it probably has things on it that nobody really needs, but it's so cool. I could not, I just could not uh, resist. Um, it comes off of the headband. Um, I could probably do it if, let me see if I'm smart enough to make it happen. But it can come off the headband so that you can set it down. It has a little hinged uh, dealy on it here. So that you can so you can change the angle of it. Uh, it's made by Black Diamond. It's called the Storm because it is also waterproof. It uses four LED batteries um, and has more features in it than, like I said, anybody should reasonably expect. But what a fun tool it is! Triple A's runs on triple A's. Yeah, four triple A batteries. Yeah, and it'll do. Um, I guess my best is probably about 25 hours of operating time. I, at the 100 lumen setting, so that that to me is pretty impressive. That's great. I want to go camping with you. You look, <laughs> you look like you're having too much fun. <laughs> so, Victor, uh, this is an intriguing one. I didn't have time to check it out. The Mega Horn. Yeah. Well, um, Clark, you you have fun camping. I have fun bicycle riding, uh, and ah. uh, you know. But I live in New York. We have a lot of traffic here. And you have to have uh, something that's going to make noise on your bikes. Uh, actually, New York State Vehicle Traffic Law says you, you have to have uh, a device on your bicycle that's audible from 100 feet away. Um, hmm. A lot of people are surprised to, to learn that. And also, at least in New York City, whistles are not legal. So, um, so what do you do? Well, you get this thing called a mega horn. All right? And let um, me see if you can see the whole thing. It, it's an electrical horn for your bicycle, runs on a 9-volt battery. It's pretty loud. It's, it's over 100 decibels. Uh, and it's got a little a remote switch that can mount onto the handlebar so that um, you don't need to remove your hands from the normal riding position in order to press that button and signal a car or a pedestrian. Uh, it's, uh, it's very handy. Um, and uh, it's, it saved my bacon a couple of times. Mm. Sells for about sixteen bucks, and um, it's uh, the the battery lasts just practically forever. That's great. Sixteen dollars, cheap life insurance. Absolutely. I would imagine even as a pedestrian in New York City, that would be kind of a handy thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, that'd be fun to just walk <laughs> with one. Okay, so uh, our last one is uh, uh, for you, Clark. The Sawyer three-way inline water filter. Yeah, you know, uh, filtering water is a big deal when you go camping. Um, just about every place you go now recommends that you filter any drinking water you get from natural sources. Um, and I have been through easily a dozen different filters. The pump filters and all kinds of things and use different chemical treatments. I'm going to show you the one thing that got me going on this one. One million gallons guaranteed. I have no idea if that's a for real or not, but we here's the filter element, and um, it's used in a gravity filter arrangement. And I'm going to tempt fate by for a third time, seeing if I can get uh, a little video of this on here. Um, yeah, this is the filter uh, we were using it last week in Canada. It's a, a bag that holds the water and some tubing down to the filter and what's really impressive about this is this is about four days into the trip and when we get close up here you'll see still flowing freely 
And when you have nine people and one water filter, being able to filter water quickly and easily is pretty important. Hmm. So I am thoroughly impressed with this thing. The filter element itself, um, the filter element itself will run you uh, about $60, which seems a little high, but that's cheap for a water filter. These things, I have taken other filters up to uh, Canada, and in the lakes there, filtered water with them and killed them, killed the filter element in a week. Um, but these things were still flowing freely when we got them home. They, they're adaptable to lots of different uses, and the technology in them is called a um, hollow fiber membrane technology, and it's based on technology that they use for kidney dialysis, believe it or not. But apparently there's, all, uh, there's many, many hollow fibers with pores in them, and the water goes in, goes through the pores, and filters out all the bad stuff. Uh, but I am thoroughly impressed with the way that these work, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll only pay $50 a year or two for a water filter element rather than replacing ours so often. Wow, that's really amazing, a million gallons. That seems like it would be great to have just one around the house, too. Yeah, I think so. Like I said, we adapted it, as I showed you in the video, for a, for a gravity filter. Mm -hmm. And most of the people who are making filters, who've historically made filters for camping, now offer some kind of gravity filter. And it's really the only way to go, as far as I'm concerned. There's no moving parts. There's no pump to break. There's no, you know... Uh, weird things that can happen uh, with something like that. Uh, and with the flow rate on this, and as reliable as it was, I just I couldn't see using anything different, especially when you're doing it for a group. Oh, yeah. That's great. Well, you guys, uh, we are out of time. It's really been fun talking to you. Yeah. These are fantastic tools, uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, everyone at Cool Tools is going to love this. Um, I've been speaking with Victor Urbach, who runs the Urbach Letter, and I'll have a link to that. Uh, what's the best URL, though, for people who are just listening and, and can't see the blog post? Well, yeah. Um, are you asking me? Yeah, yeah, Victor. Oh, yeah, what's what's a good... Ur Urbachletter.com. Urbachletter.com. Yes. Okay, that sounds great. And uh, we've also been speaking with Clark Green, Scoutmaster for 30 years, and... Uh, Clark, people can find out about what you are doing at scoutmastercg.com. Right, right, yeah. Great. You guys, thanks. This has been so much fun. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Mark. Yeah, I'd love to have you back on again soon if you guys are up for it. Oh, I got four more all ready to go. Yeah, I, I, got, I got more than four. I got more than four. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'll have you guys on again very soon because this is so much fun. It. Okay, Thank take care. Thank you very much. Bye, Bye. you guys. Bye.